There's a number of device choices out there and surely more to come, but this video will just cover some of the more common devices that you'll run into. Some of the information in this video is from a page in the Meshtastic docs, and I'll include a link to that in the video description. There's also some less common devices mentioned there, so be sure to check out that page as well after watching this video. The first device we're going to discuss is the LilyGo T-Beam. This is probably the most common device that you'll run into because it's one that most other YouTube channels have mentioned in their videos. Then we'll get into the LilyGo T-Echo. This is the only device in the list that is ready to go out of the box other than flashing the Meshtastic firmware to it. All of the other devices need some type of enclosure that you buy yourself or print with a 3D printer. Then there's the LilyGo T-Deck which is the only standalone device on this list. I have one of these and have done a few videos on it and I'll include those in the video description. Then we have one of my favorites due to its modularity and that's going to be the Rack Wireless WizBlock. And then finally we have the Heltec Lore 32 series of devices. Now when deciding what device is best for your needs, one of the things you'll want to consider is the microcontroller it uses. There's generally two supported types that you'll run into. That's going to be the ESP32 and the NRF52, and each have their own pros and cons. The ESP32 microcontroller is found on the LilyGo T-Beam, the T-Deck, and the Heltec Lore 32 series of devices. The NRF52 microcontroller is found on the LilyGo T-Echo, and the Rack Wireless WizBlock. So here are some of the differences between the two that you'll want to take into consideration. The ESP32, you'll get built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You'll get more memory, which allows for storage during a range test, and the web client is also available by connecting to these devices. One of the downsides of the ESP32 is that it is the more power hungry of the two options. Because of this, it's not the best choice for a remote solar powered setup. Now onto the NRF52. This one is Bluetooth only and does not include Wi-Fi like the ESP32. For me, this has never been a concern and the Wi-Fi on the ESP32 wasn't the most stable when I've tested it. It's also much more power efficient than the ESP32, and this makes it the best choice for a remote solar powered setup. The next thing you'll likely run into when you go to purchase are the different frequency choices. Each country has their own rules and regulations as to what band these can operate on, so you'll need to pick the correct one for your location. One of those choices is going to be 915 megahertz. You may see two choices for 915 megahertz, one for the US and one for Australia. And that's because there are some differences between the two countries and their regulations on the band that these devices operate on. The ISM band in the US is from 902 to 928 megahertz, while this band in Australia is just from 915 to 928 megahertz. The next band you'll see an option for is 433 megahertz, which is one of the bands used in Europe. And for you ham radio operators in the US, you may notice that this frequency just happens to be in the 70 centimeter ham radio band, which is 420 megahertz to 450 megahertz. So if you're a ham radio operator in the US, you could also get one of these devices for ham radio use. 902 to 928 megahertz is also the 33 centimeter ham radio band, so you could use those devices for ham radio use as well. Meshtastic has an amateur radio mode that you can turn on that disables the encryption since encryption is not allowed for use with ham radio. The next one is 868 megahertz, which is the second band that's used in Europe. There's also 865 megahertz for India, 864 megahertz for Russia, and finally 920 megahertz for Korea. Some countries use other countries' bands, and there's a nice list from the Things Network that I'll include a link to in the video description below. Now onto the devices themselves, and the first one we'll discuss is the 
Lilygo T-Beam that many have talked about. This is a ESP32 device, so it does have built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And like many devices on this list, it's just a board and no cases included. So you'll have to purchase or 3D print your own case for it. Luckily, with the popularity of this device, there are many options available for it. These devices do have a screen. You'll sometimes run into an unsoldered option where the screen hasn't been soldered to the device yet, and you'll see some that have it already done as well. These devices do have a GPS if you need location for your use case. The newest version, the T-Beam Supreme, has a BME 280 sensor that can provide humidity, barometric pressure, and temperature information. The T-Beams generally have a battery holder already soldered onto the device. If you're in the US and using the 915 megahertz band, the antenna that's included with the T-Beam is usually not a good fit for 915 megahertz at all, and you'll want to upgrade to a different antenna. But more on that on the next video where we'll go over antennas in depth. There's a number of different models in the T-Beam series from Lilygo, and there are some you should avoid, like the T-Beam version 0.7, which is no longer supported or in production. Then there's the T-Beam version 1.1. This one's fine for the most part, but it doesn't have the better SX1262 radio in it. And there's also the T-Beam with the M8N GPS which also does not have this. Now as far as the T-beams you should get, those are pretty much going to be any that do have the SX1262 radio in it. The reason these are recommended is because they have the ability to boost the gain and get increased communications distance. And devices with this are going to be the T-beam with the M8N GPS and SX1262 and the T-beam Supreme. Luckily, it's easy to spot which T-Beam has the SX1262 radio in it, as it should be marked on the radio's label. If you're looking at getting a T-Beam Supreme, you'll likely come across two versions, the L76K version and a more expensive U-Blox version. The U-Blox version will get you faster GPS fixes, meaning it'll acquire your location faster. It also provides higher precision down to the centimeter level. The L76K is a bit slower to acquire GPS fixes at around 30 seconds or so. This one is less accurate as well with an accuracy level of around 1 to 5 meters. The cheaper L76 model is probably going to be fine for most people, but if you need the higher precision and faster GPS fixes, you do have that option with the U-Blocks. The T-Beam and the rest of the devices on this list don't come with an enclosure and are just boards. If you want to protect them, you'll need to purchase an enclosure or 3D print one yourself. If you don't want to mess with all that and just want something you can purchase and hit the ground running, the T-Echo may be what you're after. With one caveat though. Like the T-Beam, there are reports that the antenna on the T-Echo is not good for 915 megahertz. I don't have one in my hands to test the antenna yet, but I should have one coming from Rockland soon, and I'll be doing a video on that device when it arrives. Unlike the T-Beam, the T-Echo uses the NRF52 microcontroller, which uses less battery power. It also has an e-ink display, which will also use less battery power. It is a much smaller device than the T-Beam, so the battery is going to be smaller at 858 milliamp hours compared to the average 18650 battery which is usually around 3,000 milliamp hours. Even with this difference in battery capacity, the battery life on the T-Echo is comparable to the T-Beam. And this shows how much more power efficient the NRF52 is compared to the ESP32. And as mentioned earlier, this comes with a case, and this also has the SX1262 radio. Now this comes in two versions. Standard, which is gonna be the NRF52, GPS and SX1262 LoRa radio, and then there's a, another version that includes a BME280 sensor for humidity, 
barometric pressure and temperature. Next we have the T-Deck and I've done a few videos on this device that I'll link in the video description but here's a brief overview of it. The T-Deck unfortunately uses the ESP32 microcontroller and has a large LCD display. These two things make the device have the worst battery life out of all the devices covered today. It is a very unique device however since it's the only one on the list that can be used completely standalone allowing you to type out your own messages on the device's keyboard without the need of connecting it to a cell phone. This device also uses the SX1262. This device is fairly new so there aren't many 3D printer files available for it yet so you may have to design your own to fit your needs. Now on to my favorite platform the WizBlock from Rack Wireless. These are all good on battery as they use the NRF52 microcontroller. And there's also a Meshtastic starter kit available if you just want what's needed to get started. And my favorite thing about the WizBlock is their modularity. If you need GPS, you can simply snap on the GPS module and you're set. If you don't want the GPS and want to avoid using the extra battery power, simply don't add a GPS to the device. There's a few weather sensor options available that you can add including the BME 680 which provides temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, and air resistance data. The Meshtastic YouTube channel has a great video on using telemetry that I'll include in the video description. You can also add an Ethernet module to connect the device to a network. At the time of this video, this is the only device that I'm aware of that has Ethernet capability. And this is useful for a number of things, including using MQTT, which will be covered in a later video. With the WizBlox, you have some choices in board sizes. If you don't need any modules other than the lower module, and you want to keep the size small, there's a small board available with just a single slot, and that's where you would put in the lower module. There's a ton of modules available for the WizBlock, way too many to list here, so I just listed a few of the commonly supported ones in Meshtastic above. While there's no visual indicators, all of the WizBlocks do have the SX1262 radio in them. Another benefit of the WizBlocks is they have a solar charger built in. This combined with the low power consumption makes them a great choice for deploying these at remote locations for extended periods of time. I've done a series on using the WizBlock to build your own remote solar power device, and I'll link that in the video description as well if you're interested. And finally, we have the Heltec Lore 32 series of devices. These all have the ESP32 microcontrollers in them, and they also all have the SX1262 except for one. And this is the model to avoid, which is the Lore 32 version 2.1. In addition to not having the SX1262, the support is ending for this device. As far as the models to get in the series, we have the Lore 32 version 3, which has a display and no GPS. Then there's the wireless stick light that has no display and no GPS. Then we have the wireless tracker, which does have a display and GPS. And then finally there's wireless paper, which has an e-ink display and no GPS. That'll do it for this video covering Meshtastic devices and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so and join me for the rest of this series. The next video will cover the various antenna options out there so you can pick one for your needs and how you can also do your own antenna testing. Thank you all and have a good one. But I just want to give a quick shout out to the channel's recent supporters. Your support is very much appreciated and if you're finding these videos useful and would like to support the channel as well, you can do so by using the coffee link in the video description or by using the thanks button below the video. Thank you for your support and helping with the channel's continued production.